All to new friends, this card making tutorial is extra special because I'm sharing a card design using the Gardens Around the World April 2022 stamp release. Many talented crafters and I are showcasing our projects in a video hop, so make sure you give them some love by subscribing and interacting with their channel. More information on this video hop and giveaways over at the Altenew blog in the description box. Also in the description box, you'll find a link to all the materials I used on this card from the Gardens Around the World stamp release. When I'm making my scene cards, I like to think of them as pieces of photography. So I think of my photographs as three separate components. The first one that I will cover is a background, or in some styles, maybe a lack thereof. But for this perfect pairing, I'm going to choose to make a very simple background, as I know I'm going to have a very intense and full scene. I have panels cut of the spicy yogurt cardstock, and I'm just going to use one of them to make one of my portrait orientation backgrounds. And I'm modeling my scene and using a little bit of inspiration from vintage postage stamps, so I felt the sepia tone and weather tone of the spicy yogurt cardstock was really fitting for that scene. The next two items I'll grab are my large ink blending tool and the Coffee Break family of mini ink cubes. I'm using my large ink blending tool to sparingly apply Rocky Shore first to the edges of my spicy yogurt cardstock panel. And I've done the same with espresso, leaving large areas of variegation throughout my panel. And lastly, I'll do some direct to paper inking techniques by just roughing up the surface of the panel. And after ink blending a few areas of espresso, I'm taking that same ink pad and going direct to paper to slightly roughen up the edge of the cardstock panel, just to really help enforce that sepia scene. So for my card, that's really the easiest component is establishing the background to my scene. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next portion of this card. I have picked these next few items as components to my scene card. So I have the Victorian Greenhouse layering stamp set and its coordinating die. And then I also have the Midsummer Bouquet outline stamp set. This is a four by six floral stamp set. And I will use all of these as the next major component to my scene card, which is the focal point. And I will have several focal points for my postage inspired scene card. So for now, I'll set aside the Midsummer Bouquet stamp set and focus solely on the Victorian Greenhouse layering stamp set and its coordinating die. As I know I want the majority of this image to be my focal point on my scene. So in my stamp positioning tool I've already got the largest image positioned on another panel of spicy yogurt cardstock and all I'm going to do is use permanent black crisp ink to stamp a solid outline impression on my panel. So I'm going to start filling this greenhouse with a few of the supporting images in Victorian Greenhouse stamp set. I'm sticking to that sepia color palette just to help enforce that vintage postage stamp look I'm going for on this card. So I still have coffee break and I'm stamping a few of these images like this large round tree in sand dunes and the pot in Rocky Shore. I'll stamp the fern pot in Mocha and then the fern image in Rocky Shore. And then I stamped the barrel cactus and its pot in espresso. Before I remove this image from the stamp positioning tool, I'll finish off the roof images to the Victorian greenhouse. So that's these solid images. And I've stamped the three solid roof images in a mix of sand dunes and rocky shore, creating a gradient from the bottom to the top. And with the coordinating die, I'll go ahead and cut out the main image that I just stamped. And after die cutting the stamp to Victorian Greenhouse image and its coordinating elements, I will also set this aside and work on a foreground element to my scene. I'm going to use the offcut of the Victorian Greenhouse image that I had earlier. And another item from the all to new April 2022 stamp release, which is the Midsummer Bouquet. And in my stamp positioning tool, I'm planning for a foreground rose bush, as if you're looking through the bushes and seeing the greenhouse in the background. And as I start assembling a scene, that will make a little bit more sense as to what I'm making. 
but I'm partially stamping the rose image onto the corner of my panel in Rocky Shore. And then after making a really rough mask with some scrap satin masking tape, I'll offset and arrange the Midsummer Bouquet image and stamp it again on my scrap panel of spicy yogurt cardstock. You'll see I'm left with a very, very minimal frame on the bottom of my cardstock, so I'll just use my craft scissors and fussy cut, leaving a little white margin around the stamped images I just stamped. And after fussy cutting that floral frame and leaving a little white margin, I'll use the coordinating Altenew Artist Markers to the ink set that I've been using. And that can be found in the D set of the Altenew Artist Markers so that I have sand dunes, rocky shore, mocha, and espresso, just like my inks that I've been using. And after adding a little bit of the Altenew Artist Markers to the leaves, I went ahead and used my woodless coloring pencils to just deepen a few areas of the flower as well. Now, none of the colored pencil names coordinate exactly with the Coffee Break family of inks, but I used Paper Bag instead, and it's pretty close. And I'm applying light layers to the flowers wherever I see fit, nothing too exact. And now that that's colored, I really have my two main focal areas to my card. Now, personally, I do the sentiment last, but I would also consider that another focal area. So you'll see me do that after the third point to my scene. But right now, as far as coloring stamped images, this is what I have planned so far for my Victorian greenhouse floral scene. Now we'll go ahead and move on to the third and final component of what I like to consider basics for scene building. So far we have two of the three elements that I have mentioned for what I consider to be successful scene building. So first we have the background that we made using spicy yogurt cardstock and a few inking techniques to create a sepia background. We have some of our focal elements, so that's the Victorian greenhouse and the Midsummer Bouquet floral frame. And off camera, I didn't record it, but I also distressed the edge of the floral frame, just like the background, just so that it matches a little bit more. And now we've moved on to the third and final element of what I consider to be visually harmonious, simple scenes. And that is composition. So it's not an element in its own, but it's a way of arranging these focal elements and all of the elements that you've created so far to create scenes that are just nice to look at. Now, there are two things that I consider for composition. One is a frame, and sometimes you don't need a physical frame, but in this case, since my card is inspired by postage, vintage postage, I decided to use this stamp frame from the Mega Stamp Frames die set, and I used this larger one just to cut out a piece of white cardstock, and this will act as my frame to anchor all of these elements together. And then the final piece is, well, where do I put all of this? And one really simple rule of photography is the rule of thirds. So I want to consider the green life. So I want to consider the greenery inside my greenhouse to be part of this rule of thirds. So if I subdivide my card into thirds, and I'm just doing rough estimates, then that means my focal elements will fall into the lines where those third subdivisions intersect. So in my crafty stash, I have this transparency that I've made a long time ago, but you can see that my greenery falls into one of the intersecting lines of my one third rule grid. And so that brings me to my final portion, which I kind of mentioned earlier, is that I like to do sentiments last because then that leaves this extra area right here where two other lines intersect on my card front as a visually appealing place for my sentiments. So keeping all of that in mind, I can use this For My Forever Friend sentiment, which kind of goes with the forever stamp theme that I have going on for this scene-inspired card. And I can stamp that directly onto my background following the rough estimate of my one-third rule grid. And you can use your transparency to position your sentiment stamp. And then you can remove your grid and other elements that are not glued down to your background yet. The next thing I'll do is glue down the Victorian greenhouse. And what I'm going to do is raise this up a little bit. So I'm going to foam mount this to my background. And to do that, I'll use my trusty instant dimension foam tape. And after foam mounting that, next comes the most foreground element, my Midsummer Bouquet Rose Frame, just to create some interesting depth as you're looking at this scene. 
and I will use a double layer of foam tape to raise this up on my card front. And then after trimming off that overhang from the Victorian greenhouse, and that finishes my three tips for simple and effective scenes based on photography rules. So just as a recap, I have my very clean and simple background. You can make it as dynamic and as bold as you would like. But I chose to have a heavier amount of foreground elements, so I kept my background very simple. I have my focal point images, the whole point of the scene. So that's my Midsummer Bouquet foreground element. And my Victorian greenhouse, as if you're looking through the rose bush to the vintage greenhouse, as well as my focal sentiment, which carries us into the third element of very simple scene compositions, which is placement and the whole composition. So I've used a frame to anchor all of these elements together and the rule of thirds to carefully place my sentiment and a few focal areas such as the greenery inside of my Victorian greenhouse. My series encourages you to shop your existing all-to-new stash and rekindle their love with newer releases. Perfect Pairings with JC airs on the all new channel every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Perfect Pairing episode with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello there, crafty friend Lydia here. Just popping in to say that you can get your daily dose of crafting tips, techniques, and tutorials just like this by subscribing to the Altenew YouTube channel. All you need to do is click on that little bell up there and you will never miss a video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.